The new Blender Challenge has started and the topic is tools and I've created this reference image that you can download from a link in the description and we're going to go through this uh, right now. It should take us, uh, I hope, just one modeling video but it might take a little bit more. Um, if, if any part of this seems a little simplistic that's because I'm doing it on video and I'm trying to make it uh, straightforward for relative beginners. If you'd like to join the Blender Challenge I'll leave a link to the ZeroBio Discord and you can uh, come on over and uh, do your modeling along with us. Okay, there'll be more information about the challenge coming up, but right now we're gonna model this pipe wrench. So this is a reference image and I brought it in and I moved it back just a little bit, all right? And I've pulled it down so that it's sort of centered down to the bottom. We may touch that up a bit. So I'm gonna start by bringing in a plane, go into edit mode and scale it down. I'm gonna rotate X90. And I'm going to pull this up and we're going to see how well we are centered. Not too bad, actually. So I'm going to go into wireframe mode. And I'm going to grab these vertices and I'm going to pull them up to the top like this. All right, there we go. Okay, good. So I'm going to select it now and I'm going to give it a little bit of thickness. And you can just look over here to get a sense of how thick you want to make this so I don't know something something like that and let's take it in recalculate outside in case my polys are flipped okay so the first thing we're going to do up here actually I'm going to press three for face select I'm going to take that top face and P to break it out and separate it out so now I've got that as a separate piece to make the top and in fact what I might do is take this and shift D and duplicate it one more time and bring it over here and just just have that sitting there ready for for that all right so back to this I'm going to come in and two for edge selection I'm going to select there and I'm going to bevel that control B I'm going to pull I'm going to press C for clamp so they'll meet in the middle there now I can roll my mouse up and I'm, I'm going to use quite a lot of segments to make it nice and round now I'm going to select everything and press M merge by distance and you'll see it got rid of a little bit okay so with that done I'm going to select the edges now like that and I'm going to make sure I got it all and we're going to uh, bevel this control B pull and I could probably get away with three segments so there's two three we'll see how smooth that is so I think that's going to be enough all right so we have that looks okay so far I'm going to turn on the cavity shader and it'll look a little bit better we'll be able to see what we're doing as well all right so from front view I'm going to come in and in face selection I'm going to select that face and I'm going to shift D and P to break it out and I'll go back into it and I'm going to S to scale just get it off that edge pull it in a little bit and just scale it so that I get a nice in that I could be looking in wireframe <laughs> I haven't been but uh, I'm roughly approximating that shape okay so I am in wireframe now I'm gonna select this edge I'm just gonna pull it down a ways almost about halfway because we're gonna select this and we're gonna shift D rotate Y 180 and flip it around and then I'm gonna bring this up to match this and now to join these, I'll come back into solid view so you can see. To join them, I'm going to, in edge selection, shift up. I'm going to select just the edge, not shift up, just the edge. And control E, bridge edge loops. And then in my dialog box, I'm going to turn on merge. And I'll merge them together. But let's get rid of that one edge so we'll have that. Now I'm just pull it out a little bit. Okay, so we're going to use this to make a boolean. So I'm going to E to extrude. And I'm going to pull it in. And I might look in wireframe just to see, but I'll just probably do this more by eye. So we'll have that. Let's select it all. Alt N, recalculate outside. And let's get that on the back side as well. So select the whole thing. Shift S, cursor to select it. Bring my, my 3D cursor there so I can mirror this. Set the origin of this to the 3D cursor. And now we should be able to mirror this in the Y. And we'll have that. I'm going to apply the mirror select my main body there the handle and do a boolean i'm going to turn it to fast and click and i'm going to apply that and i should be able to get rid of that and i'll have an indent let's just see if it's far enough in i think it is 
Now, the only thing is, I don't like this edge coming off uh, that the Boolean made. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to come across here and press J to join. And now I'm going to dissolve that edge. So I got that taken care of. I just want to look at the back of this. And I have another one here. So what I might do, let's try that trick again. Let's grab those J to join. That'll cut through the whole thing and uh, dissolve that edge. Let's see what it's like if we go around and we select in order to do our Boolean. Make sure it goes all the way around on the front and on the back. So holding Shift and Alt and clicking, getting that part and that part. Okay, I'm going to zoom in up here and have a look at this as I do Control B and pull. And again, I can have probably the three segments. And if I shade smooth now, the shading is going to be a little funny. And the way we're going to deal with that is we will put on weighted normal and normals auto smooth. Sometimes we throw a bevel in there as well. Uh, even if we almost don't need it, it helps to clear things up. So it's looking okay so far. So let's do the hole that we need. Our 3D cursor is right there. So let's bring in a cylinder. I'll just keep it at the default 32. So this is not particularly low poly. I just want it to look nice and smooth. Rotate X90 and pull this down. And we'll make a hole right there. So I just need to make sure it goes all the way through. So I'll scale it in the Y nice and big so it goes through. Okay, the main body again. I'm going to do a Boolean. I like to bring it to the top. I'll put it on fast and I'll click there and apply. I don't need that anymore. Okay, it looks ugly, but that's because we need to add a bevel and that will clear that up. So shift alt and click those edges. And on the back side, do it there, control B, pull. And you can have another segment or two in there. And we now have a hole. Okay. So now we'll come up to the top here. Go to edit mode for this guy here. I just got that selected. So we'll sort of follow the diagram. I'll pull this down here and I'll make sure I'm in wireframe mode. And I'll box select those vertices there. And I'm going to drag it out to here. Box select these ones, drag it out to here, select the whole thing and extrude it up. So we have this. Go back into solid view. And you can see there's a bit of a, a curve here. So I'll I'll do that. I'll bevel that. Uh, I'm going to control B and pull and ha I'll have five segments. And I'll probably bevel most of it. Um, at least by hand so I'm going to bevel these ones and yeah I'm using five I'm not using the, the, the one for low poly or the three um, just because this is just for this is just for a static image so now I'm going to make sure actually I come all the way around and here okay let's do this uh, grab this edge and if you hold down um, control you can get it to follow along for a further distance every time you press control and uh, control up to there okay so I want to bevel all of that now I think I'm only going to use three for this control B so I'm going to roll back there's two three and we'll have a little bit of a bevel on there okay I'll take this and let's see now maybe I'll bring this piece up so I'm going to shift alt and click here I got something else there there we go and just pull it in in fact this thing now that I realize has to be wider um, and it's got to go over the edges so even though I've got a bevel there I'm just gonna SY scale it out a little bit yeah like that maybe even a tiny bit more okay so still that's fine okay so I'm gonna do the teeth and I'm gonna do it as part of this object and now that I've got uh, I've got my uh, bevels on there and end gons I can't just cut through so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to look through this here and I'm going to make a cut through here I'm going to use bisect so I'm going to come to around around here and I'm just going to drag down and it doesn't matter if it's not straight because I'm going to straighten it out sx0 so I've cut right through the mesh and I do have enough room over here mesh bisect 
cut through the mesh around there, SX0 to straighten it, and now I can add edge loops like that. So I'm, that's what I'm going to do. So Control R, and I'm going to roll up until I've roughly sort of approximated this, and I think I'm going to stop it about there. There seems to be a cut pretty much in between each of these. So now that I've got those, I'm going to create a little space. It will be off the diagram a little bit. I'm going to create a little space like that, by pulling like that, and then I'm going to extrude up in between. All right, so I'm going to select that one, 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 and that one. I'm in face selection, and I'm doing that. And I'm going to press E to extrude, and I'm just going to pull it up to pretty much match the diagram. Like that. You can accentuate it if you want to go higher. I'm going to SY, pull them in like that. Okay, now I'm going to add a bevel modifier on top of that, and that'll bevel those up. And I'll put a, a couple of segments. I, I probably would end up going to three. Uh, just, it'll look a little bit better okay and to clear up some of this stuff here I will try adding a weighted normal and normals auto smooth and it should be okay that's gonna be just fine okay I'll just make sure that uh, everything's okay merge my distance so there's nothing to deal with there so we're still pretty much on the diagram all right, so there is the handle. Now, I may put some more details on this in texturing. Uh, we can do some text later, but let's turn our attention now to this thing here and see where it is. Okay, it's there. All right, let's start extruding up, and then we'll just move it. To... So I've made these both the same uh, width, just to make it easier on us. All right, I've taken some liberties to make it a bit easier so i'm going to pull come up to about here okay where where it goes under to about there and then mm, that's neat all right well let's get rid of that edge and uh, let's get rid of that edge mm. and those We'll try merge by distance, see if anything's happened. I don't know what happened there. Maybe you saw it and I didn't. Uh, let's take that and let's extrude it out. Let's go with the same, uh, the same thickness or depth or width or whatever it is we're calling that. Okay, so going up to there, we're going to, um, we're going to round this. We're going to leave the top for the moment. So I'm going to come in here and grab those. I had pressed C before for clamps, so I think it's still going to be on. I'm going to bevel and pull, and it's going to hit, and I'm going to roll up. A bunch of times select it all merge by distance so it's all looking good we're not going to bevel yet the uh, sides of it we're, instead we're going to grab this look from the front and we're going to extrude up to the top to about there just you know above where the curve is there okay and then we're going to come over here we're going to grab this face we'll go back in and i'm going to extrude out to about here it, it goes under so i'm going to press e to extrude and it'll come out to about there okay now i'm going to grab that back edge and control b to bevel and i'm going to pull until we hit there and i'm going to roll my mouse up because of the clamp that's on there and i'll get that effect i'm going to take this edge and i'm going to pull it down we'll do some more work on this in a little bit i'm also going to bevel under here even though you won't see it i think it'll make it easier for me to bevel all around it looks like a duck's head doesn't it and now we're actually going to do that but just before we do i might try to see we're off the diagram a little bit let's let's maybe pull this up a little bit and see if it uh, looks a bit better. See, if I do that, you know, I'll come to about there. Okay, uh, I may take this and just pull it down a little and try to get a bit of a better curve. So we definitely have end guns in here, but it shouldn't matter. And especially as a piece of flat metal, you know, we'll get the nice edge and uh, that looks fine like that anyhow. And it should be okay for us. Um, so let's come in here now. I could probably get rid of this face and I may end up bringing this down just a little bit more as we tuck it under. But anyways, let's go around and, and bevel all of this. So I'm going to have to do multiple selections here to get all the edges. So I've got it coming around the head there, coming up around here, 
Okay, and let's go over on the other side. Okay, just clicking and getting all this stuff. Uh, trying not to get anything else and I'll see like that one. I'll double check that I have just what I need. And sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll have more than I need and it just won't work well. All right, with that done, let's give it a try. Control B, pull. Oh, where, where am I? Control B. Okay, so my bevel is not working, so I'm going to Alt N, recalculate outside, and merge by distance. And I'm going to just do a little test. Okay, try again. And I should be okay. Sometimes that'll happen though and it'll have to do with your your edge flow and some extra edges or vertices or something funny going on there well, let's see if i've got everything and what do i want to have three if you try three and see can't really go back once you once you do it we could shade smooth and see yeah i think that's going to be enough i'm not going to worry about shading right now uh so i'm actually going to go back to shade flat and we're going to do this little piece here, which is an added on piece. It's not, it's not uh, pushed in. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to uh, do that. We'll go Shift D to duplicate, scale it in. And actually I could be looking in wireframe. And I'm going to scale it in until it roughly matches uh, here. I'll pull it down a bit. Um, I'll go into solid view. I'm going to pull it out a little bit and actually we need to break it out there that's better let's go into wireframe and see that we've got a curve on the inside now it's got a funny top to it so I'm going to come in and I'm going to take that out let's flatten this out actually let's uh, yeah let's flatten it out S is at zero and let's get rid of this extra vertex we don't need it so let's dissolve vertex vertices. so now we have the two and I'm going to do like I did before I'm going to pull this down to a little under halfway, take it, shifty, rotate Y 180 degrees. What did I do? Uh, shifty, rotate Y 180. That's better, maybe it was fine. I was just looking at this, I thought I had a circle. All right, okay, so we'll have that, and then we'll take these two edges and we'll, uh, let's make sure I've got just two edges. Control E, bridge edge loops. We still have the merge function turned on. All right, so I'll just remember that for later if we do something. And uh, I will, um, I should be able to dissolve that edge. And if you can't, you might have to do some of this. You see, I had some extra vertices in there. I, I don't know why, but it might have been because I hesitated before and I didn't do something. Anyways, with that done, I'm now going to press I to inset and pull in. You can hold shift to move slower if you need to and simulate that. And then X faces, get rid of that, go back to solid. So we have this and that's what we wanted. Let's extrude that back a little bit and then just get rid, not too much, just get rid of that back face. And then we'll come in here in two and edge selection, a shift alt and click there. Should go all the way around, zoom in and we'll give this a little bevel, control B, pull, and I just need the three segments and I'll shade it in a bit. So now I'm just going to GY and pull it in and, and hold shift till it makes contact and bring it in a little bit more uh, because it's pretty flat. That makes sense. Doesn't stick out too much. I don't need it to. All right, let's mirror that to the other side by taking the whole thing. Shift S, cursor is selected. And we'll take that, set the origin to the 3D cursor, and we'll mirror this in the Y, turn off the X, and that's good. I'll, I'll go ahead and apply the mirror. I'm not going to join this yet. So we're moving along, going pretty good. So we got that. Um, now the next thing is let's do these little uh, teeth kind of things on here. Again, I've got Boolean. Okay, as you can see, I'm trying to control R. It's not going all the way around. So we'll use the, the bisect trick. Now, you can have these teeth coming up further up the neck if you want. I'm just going to do it from here to here roughly. So mesh bisect. I'll just come in rough, roughly around there. Scales at zero to straighten it though. Select it all. Mesh bisect cut through scale z zero and now if i want to i can put edge loops on here and so let's uh let's roll up and it's i can't exactly see behind there so i'm just going to do 
Maybe I'll do that. It's kind of close, so something like that. So I'm going to click, I'm going to accept that, and I need to create that little space in between. So Control B and pull and go back to zero. And you know what? I think that's a little bit too big, so I think I need to do that again and have them a little closer. So um, I might do, let's see, I might do that. And I guess I will deviate from the diagram. It's all right. So I just want a little space in between. So I'll do something like that. And now I'm going to focus just on that with the slash key. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to select, you know, everyone that's got, the, you know, the space in between. So I'm in face selection and I'm holding shift and I'm just clicking like that. And then on this side. And there are many different ways to create these things. Uh, this is just the way I chose to show you. Okay, like that. Uh, I will uh, bring that stuff back so we can see. Okay, I'm going to E and I'm going to SX. So again, off the diagram, but that's okay. I don't want these too, too prominent, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to scale them in the Y a little bit. All right, and I'll get that effect. And I'll put on a bevel uh, later on, and that will help that because the edge is beveled, but these things aren't beveled, so we'll have to do that. All right, it's time to work on this piece here. And to do that, I think I will take that face right there, Shift D to duplicate it, pull it out, P to break it out, and we'll start building from that thing there. All right, so I've got that there. I'm just going to pull it up to here or so. I think I will go ahead and extrude it up so I get that. I'm going to need it wider, so scale it in the Y and have it stick out on the sides, kind of like the way this one did, but it's not far enough back yet. So I'll take that and I can switch into wireframe. And the idea is I'm going to pull out here, pass to about there, and I'm going to drop an edge loop in. I'm just following the diagram to about here, okay? And then I want to grab this bottom face, and I'll go back into the diagram and extrude it down like that. And then we're going to see if it if it fits right, if it looks right. I may pull it down just a little bit. I just want to make sure that this goes in. Okay, now that I see that, I'm going to come back to here, and I'm going to have a look at this and see if I can just pull this up a little bit so that the nose of it goes down a little closer to there. All right. Okay, that's all right like that. So we wanna curve this. So we'll come in here and we'll grab this and I'm just going to bevel it. I don't need the clamp thing going. I just want a nice curve there and I want a curve under here. So I'm just gonna do this, and I'm gonna curve these a little bit, you know, that kind of thing. And then I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna grab these front ones, I'm gonna curve that a bit. I'm not really thinking about how many, I guess five. And then I wanna go all the way around on the outside. So I'm holding uh, Shift and Alt and clicking, and just trying to get every section of this till we get back to the Okay, and with that done, I will control B, pull. I just need three. It should be okay like that. I haven't smoothed it yet, so. And I'm just looking at this, and I'm just trying to decide if I want to pull this up even a little bit more. I just don't want it to stick out. All right, I'll leave it there for now. Uh, okay, so now we're going to make the teeth, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing what we did before. We're going to use uh, bisect to cut through there and to cut through there. Let's come down to about there, cut through, scale it XX0 to straighten it, select it. You have to have it selected to use the bisect. And there, SX0. Now I can do edge loops, so let's do that and see. How about, how about that for the teeth? Okay, control B and pull, roll back to zero. So we just have the two to create a little space. And again, you can do these as, as tight as you want, as sharp as you want. This is just one way to do it. 
Okay, now we will extrude out, come down to there, and let's scale it in the Y in a little bit like that. And we have built that. All right, let's add our bevel to this. I'll try three and let's go ahead and shade smooth and let's fix the shading issues by weighted normal and normals auto smooth. So that is our piece there. Hopefully it looks okay. There's a hole still to do and then we'll shade smooth this. All right, so let's just go ahead and do the hole. My 3D cursor is right there. That's, that's just fine. I could spend time pulling these out I just don't know it's worth it. I think I'll just do my hole, but just I want to avoid that edge. So instead of tweaking this right now, uh, I think I will go ahead and just make a hole, just move its position a little bit. Rotate X90, G to grab or go or whatever it is, and pull this in. I'm going to have to bevel this, but that's no problem. I should be, I'm, I'm pretty close to where the hole is anyhow. The hole is really the, the black part, the inside part. And then there's a rim on the outside. They actually need to leave some room for that. So I'll do, I'll do it like that. I'll scale it in the Y so it goes through. And you know, you just wanna try not to overlap these lines, uh, these edges, or you'll run into more troubles than you need. Boolean, I'll switch it to fast and uh, with the eyedropper we'll select that and apply it but let's just hide that let's not delete it let's we'll use that again and I've got that and I don't think I really need to smooth it I could have used less polys because we're going to take this and we're going to make a, a little rim with that so let's scale it in the Y to about how high we want it to come out exaggerated a bit because it is a 3d model and it can be hard to see some of these details so I'm gonna press I to inset and pull it in like this again I'm, I'm not looking at the diagram now I'm just I'm just doing my thing now we're gonna bridge edge loops but remember we had that merge on so it's gonna go weird so just turn that off and you get a proper uh, bridge okay in two edge selection shift alt and click those edges and on the other side as well and bevel that with just with three pull two three all right I can shade smooth that and just decide if you like it sticking out that much or it bothers you or what let's try shading smooth on that and yeah okay so I'm gonna hide this we do want to bevel this this edge even though you're not gonna see it because that's gonna help fix up some of the shading problems by beveling it so I just don't want that Make sure nothing else is selected. So we'll watch this. Control B, pull, roll up a couple times. And it's not completely solved yet. Bring that back, but it will be when we do this. Uh, and that. I may want to make that a bit bigger and uh, just scale it in the Y. Just because we were seeing that hole, which may not be a bad thing, but. All right, so we're doing quite well. Moving along here. I'm gonna make an adjustment here now. I'm gonna switch this to both and up these values here. It'll just start looking a little bit different. All right, all right, so that's what we've got. Oh, there is one thing we do need to put on. We need to put on the bevel and that's going to help with that. I'm gonna drag it up and we'll try a couple. So that just helps with the teeth there. Makes, makes them look a little bit better and again because this is metal uh, although there are shouldn't be sharp ends um, I, I hopefully will have a little bit of a bevel on there to improve the look of it all right the weirdest part to do is this one um, or I could do that all right let's let's get that done and out of the way kind of wish that was thicker I don't know control plus a couple times and then we could scale, but not in the Y. Scale, shift, Y. Just kind of want it a little bit more like, I don't know, a little bit more pronounced. Okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to select, uh, bring my 3D cursor there if I can. What's, what am I doing? There it is. All right, and we're going to make this little hook. It, it, it joins in the middle and it comes out and it goes around. So I guess you could stick a something, th um, a strap through there or you could put it on your belt somehow. I don't know. Uh, anyways, we're going to do that. So uh, the way I'll do it, I think, is I'll bring it a plane, scale it down, and pull it back. 
and uh, let's just see yeah okay um, let's uh, let's get rid of that edge and then we'll have this piece here and me as as long as you want I'm gonna go into vertex selection I'm just gonna select here you can do it with a mirror but I think I like it this way so I'm gonna E and SY just pull it in so there's a little bit of a gap in between and now I'll take all of these points here those four and we'll bevel them I'm gonna use five okay so shift control B not just control B shift control B because it's just it's just a plane or it was a plane and do something like that so you like the curve all right, now we're going to take this and we're going to convert that to a curve and the curve dialog box under geometry we're going to increase the bevel hold down shift though so it doesn't go too fast now you can look at the diagram if you want to sort of see how thick it was here let's pull it forward a bit so just get it nice and thick so you can see it you know better uh yeah something like that and we'll, we'll rotate it down in a bit so if you like that then come up to the resolution don't leave it on 12 put it at about four or something so that when you convert to a mesh you don't have too many polys all right in face selection and a shift alt and click here and here and let's create uh this thing here with that there let's go e and alt s and push and push it out a little bit so it looks just gives it a bit more detail it's more geometry however keep that in mind but uh, i'm not worried about that in this particular case all right, we'll grab all of these. We'll bevel these with three, control B, and scroll back, three. And we're gonna need an edge loop uh, here to tighten up the, the for the shading anyhow, so I might as well put that in. So we're just doing one close to there. I don't slam it in so that it's on top of other vertices. I just bring it close. We'll go like that, and we can shade smooth, and probably I'd end up, I mean, you certainly don't need a subdivision, you know, but if you put it on, it's, whatever so i won't i won't bother right now and for this i'm not sure what to do um, i was thinking of just closing that and grabbing those and control b and having three and just having it in like that it does kind of bug me like that i almost always would put some other kind of cap on it but we'll just we'll just leave it now if i'm right my 3d cursor is right in the middle here so i should be able to take this and set this to the 3d cursor for the pivot point and then just r to rotate and pull it down and uh, if you want it to fall more just it you're in the we're in the Y just go R Y and just I don't know something like that and uh, maybe these aren't close enough I don't know so I'm gonna look from the side and I'm going to box it like here and here and I'm gonna um, S Y scale in the Y I still have the 3d cursor on and hopefully that's okay let's go back to median point all right you can do as much as you want with that all right so now it's on to the tricky part that thing there okay so the way we're going to do this is we're going to bring in a cube and i'm going to bring it down i'm going to line up the top edge and i'm going to go into wireframe and i'm going to box select the bottom and pull it to there I'm going to box select here, pull it in here. Now, if I go out a little further, it's only going to help us rather than hinder us because we have some odd booleans to do. I'm going to do an edge loop right there, right in the middle, and that gives us the, the ability to create that other piece here. So I'm going to take this, and actually just before I do that, I'm still looking here. Um, well, no, I can... I can I can go ahead and extrude that out like that. I just want to make sure, yeah, I think we've come out far enough, okay, okay. I'm okay with that. Now it's a little fat though, isn't it? Let's, let's scale this in the Y and do something, something like that. It's got some substance to it, or you can have it laying closer to the actual uh, tool if you want, but uh, I, I think I'm probably okay like that. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to bevel these back edges here. And I think the clamp is still there. So control B, pull, and then roll my mouse up and get a bunch of nice segments and then merge by distance. Now, it looks really good like that, but I don't think I can leave it like that because I have to cut a hole in here for the wheel. 
and it will it will bump into these edges and so what I pretty much have to do is come in in wireframe in one I have to box select these and scale them in the X or to flatten them out not too much we're gonna start to get a potential sharp edge here all right and I might pull it out a little bit um, just to get it out of the way so that I can cut a hole here without any chance of hitting there. So I'm going to leave it there for now. As you, as I said, we could get some issues here, but I don't think that will show up uh, in uh, in any render or in the materials. And also, the cavity shader, uh, you know, sometimes picks up things that aren't really exactly there. So I'm going to leave that on because I just like it. And I'm going to come over here now to these ones here. And we are going to round them. Control B and pull and till, till they touch. And I'll leave. I'll, I'll do it like that. But select it. Merge by distance. Now I'm going to come in here. I'm going to select this edge here. Control B and pull. And I probably don't need that many. So I could probably get away with five. And here, this edge. Just get, I'm not really looking at the diagram, I'm just making some nice curves. And I'm gonna come back here, and now I'm going to shift alt and click, and I'll have that happen. So instead I'm gonna select, and then I'm gonna press control each time, and I'm gonna go further and further along. So I'm gonna come back to here, so I should have a full uh, you know, edge going all the way around it. And now I'm gonna bevel this. Control B, pull, and you can choose how many you want to do. I might go for a bunch to get it nice and, nice and smooth. I'm going to do the same kind of thing at the bottom. I'm going to press Control as I go around. And I should be able to come all the way back to here. No, maybe I lost here. So I'm going to come a little bit further. And then we'll come back to there. Okay. Control B, pull. So we're getting a bevel here and there. Okay, I'm not going to smooth it right now. Um, uh, I think I might need to move it in a little bit. Uh, let's see. Do I? I kind of want it like that. And then I may uh, box select these. Pull them out a little bit more and just go with that. All right. So we're going to cut a hole through this for this piece here. I think the way we'll do that is... I'm going to um, select this top just to bring my 3D cursor there and get it in the area. And I'll come back to here. Okay. So now I'm going to bring in a plane. So it's right there. And we can scale it down. So it's just outside of this here. I'll pull it up to there so, you can, so we can see. Um, we're going to have another hole for this one. So I don't want it to go out too far. And the scale in the wine. You also don't want the hole too big, or else it looks like the thing flops around in there. And I've had that problem. I think I'll start there, and I'm going to extrude down through. And now we'll look at beveling these edges. I'm going to get that one, and this one. All right, I'm going to bevel it. I'll probably go with the five, and just sort of think about whether or not that would make a nice hole. I think it will, so I'm going to try it. All right, so the only thing you got to make sure is that the polys are facing out. So select my main body here, and I'm going to do a Boolean. I'll turn it to fast, and with the eyedropper, I will select that, apply, and I will delete that. So I've got a hole going through, so I'm going to just focus on that, and I'm going to come in, and I'm going to try to bevel this edge. Now, this is not really great topology or anything but we should be able to get away with it so i'm going to shift or uh, select and then keep pressing control till we get back to the beginning here all right and yeah let's bevel that control b pull all right we did it and of course there's the bottom part as well so if you try doing shift and control you'll you probably get more than you need, more than you bargain for, because of the what, how these booleans do. So I'll just do that. All right, slash. I haven't smoothed this yet or anything. I just want to look at this, and you know, I don't want it much tighter than that. I mean, you can start pulling stuff in and stuff, 
I'm not going to worry too much. I think I'm going to do... I think... Uh, I'm not sure why these are here. I don't think I... I need those and that was causing a problem before and then uh, you know later on you can tweak these things if you want I'm not gonna worry about it right now uh, let's do the the square hole or the really rounded hole for the knob and then we'll think about trying to push another hole through in the middle of that all right so my 3d cursor is right there it doesn't matter I'm just gonna bring in another cube and just drag it over here, scale it down a little bit, and look at wireframe, and start positioning this, scale in the Z, there we go, something like that, make sure it goes all the way through, and before we do our cut, let's now bevel the actual cutting tool here, just by eye with say five just like that okay take this boolean fast eyedropper hit that apply delete take this and focus on it and have a look all right i'm going to bevel the outer edge so i'll try shift alt and click and i get a whole bunch of other stuff so i'm just going to select and and use the uh, control key to come around and if you can't see the edge sometimes you just take off the cavity it's sometimes easier to see uh, what I've got what I don't have because I, I did have that and down to there I'm gonna put that back on though and really I should probably do both of them at the same time ah, I missed some here and if you do miss some, you will see <laughs> that you did. Uh, okay. Yeah. Is that everybody? Let's give it a try and see. Control B. I'm looking on the other side. Looks like I missed something there, but maybe I didn't. Okay. All right. Let's hope for the best. And yeah that's for this for the for the wheel and this is relatively centered so that's okay let's before we do a wheel let's try one more uh, one okay so how about we go in here and take something central like that and then bring in our plane and let's just Try to get the size of this. Let me come up to here because it's got to go past the teeth, if you call them teeth, if that's what they are. I don't know what you would call those. Maybe they are teeth. And uh, let's try just pushing this through and seeing how, how that's going to look. I might be able to pull this in a little bit afterwards. I'd rather do it after than and find out I got more than I need than not enough. I'm, I'm just grabbing these to bevel them and uh, like that and then looking at it. So I won't hit the sides it looks like which is good although I will go over some of these edges and you know but we're not really going to see inside it so you know it's just the way the way things are. So let's go ahead and uh, and do that and see what kind of damage control we can do. Let's focus just on that and see how it looks. We're not gonna see inside there very much and probably would never even see the top of this, but you know, you never know. So let's just uh, come around here and I'll do the top separate from the bottom. I just wanna try to bevel that. Just, you know, pick up a little bit of light there and this one down here. All right. We can shade smooth, we can try weighted normal and normal's auto smooth. And it looks okay. Um, now it's a question of, do I wanna start screwing with this? 
I think I do want to start screwing with that. Uh, I just want to see how far I'm coming in and how it looks with respect to the diagram. I don't really need to do that. All right. I think we're going to be okay. The, the holes might be a little bit big. You could try closing them a bit. You can come in here and in wireframe, you know, you can grab the vertices and, and try to make it a smaller hole uh, if it's bothering you. So, for example, if I do this, there's the teeth there. If I pull that in a little bit, you know, you can do that kind of thing. But I don't think I'm going to bother. I think it's going to look okay. So, how about we try, let's see, select something there and maybe the other side and we'll bring the 3d cursor there and then we can bring in another we'll bring a cylinder i'm leaving the default values i'm going to scale it and i'm going to scale in the z i'm going to scale shift uh not x scale shift z to be like that uh you know what maybe i will scale it in a bit smaller actually and scale it in the z uh, scale shift Z just till we get something that we kind of like. Um, scale shift Z. Stick it out. All right, so it's going to stick out a little bit, which it should. Control R. Let's do this. Control B, pull, make a space just like that. E and Alt S and pull. Pull that in. And then Shift Alt and click these edges. Turn to the side and Control B. Pull and have one more, so a total of three there. We do the same on the top. I might do a bit of a bigger bevel. Control B, so we have more room. I might even put an extra one in there. So we're getting this. Okay, next is we are going to drop an edge loop right down there, right down there. So I've got relative squares. I'm in uh, face selection. I'm going to shift all to click here and here, here and here. And what I might do is I might. Um, I might separate these out P, separate them out by selection. And then uh, I may uh, scale shift Z, pull them out a little bit, and then take this edge E and S and push it back under. E and S and push it back under. Uh, so I wanna do something separate with this. E and S push it under, E and S push it under, and then take these and bevel these edges. I'm pretty much gonna bevel everything. All right, control B, pull, just three is fine. So we have these raised parts and we have this. And I might do something with the edges of that, but here's what I wanna do with these. Shift Alt to click now the squares that are here, sort of separate from the, bev the, the bevel. And I'm going to control F, poke faces, and then control F again, tries to quads. So I have this. Now I'm gonna press I twice, I, I, hold shift and pull it. cycle until we have that pattern then e and alt s and push and push them out a little bit you don't have to come out you know from here to florida or anything and then for this part i'm going to add a bevel now it's debatable if you want to you you would probably want to do this in texturing all right but it looks good in geometry and you know why stop now uh let's try just shade smooth on that and add um weighted normal and normals auto smooth and see if i got to do some other work on that let's uh, select everything though and recalculate outside and that is our wheel you know and that is our wheel and i think that's going to look just fine like that okay is there any chance that i would have to merge any i didn't get rid of anything so so where are we at we got that all right, we could put a bolt. Now these bolts are sort of placeholders right now. Um, so, but I'll we'll put them on because it's sort of complete the thing and put some text on there. So let's just bring in a circle of sixteen. I have to make a face. Or where am I? Did I have to make a face? Not yet. Rotate x ninety. Pull that guy out and scale it down. And. Let's go back in wireframe. Okay, something like that. Extrude it back a bit. Delete that back face. And like I say, for now, I may do this in texturing, but for now, we'll just we'll just do it like this. And pull that in. I'll shade smooth. That may or may not be flipped, so just 
error on the side of caution and do it that way yeah that could go there all right so but before I mirror it let's just take another one and shift D I just thought for some reason on that flat part I would put a bolt I don't know why but I'm gonna P to break it out because I'm going to do I'm gonna mirror this one after so I want this one separate rotate X minus 90 look from the top and scale it and just put it in here I probably would massage these and just pull them in by hand all right to make it a little bit less sharp you could do what, whatever you like there let's focus on that come on down here okay I'll push it in nice and deep so uh, you know what that's too big for me I'll just do something like that okay and then we'll take this and we'll select it all shift S cursor to selected and set the origin to the 3d cursor and mirror this guy in the Y and we got on the other side as well and uh, let me go ahead and apply that mirror I'm not going to join a bunch of stuff right now we can leave it like that and um, that's oh there is another one up there yeah let's do that one too okay let's take this shift D just to try and add more details you know let's break it out though let's take that and let's rotate X 90 and I just wanted to have something in the jaw there hopefully it looks like it connects with something maybe it's gonna go up there um, let's actually uh, compare to where I've got it yeah so, somewhere in there so it looks like it does make contact with something okay and uh, we will take this thing now and set the cursor to, to there set the origin to the 3d cursor and mirror it in the Y it's on the other side as well oh, I'll, I'll apply that now I think I've got all the details except for the text on here so let's hide that for now and let's take this wrench and I'm going to make sure I'm in medium point I'm going to rotate this I'm going to rotate Y 90 uh, minus oops let's rotate Y minus 90 and rotate X minus 90 and just sort of set her down here and shift Z to bring the 3d cursor back so we've got it there I just feel like working in that orientation now to do some text I probably would do the text in substance painter but it does look nice in 3d uh, so I will do that as a last thing for you and I'll only do it on the one side you can do it on the other side as well bring my 3d cursor there and bring in some text and we're going to scale this down a bit drop it in here it'll probably have to come up a little okay let's look down on it let's change that to say heavy duty I'll leave the default font uh, just because it looks kind of okay no, no, let's not do that <laughs> just scale and just position it where you kind of want it and over here in the text dialog under geometry we will hit extrude hold shift just give it a little bit of extrusion and a little bit of bevel and then bring her down GZ 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 whatever you like and then like I say you could do it on the other side as well if you want and then really uh, I'll do a little bit on here as well slash look down from the top we'll bring the 3d cursor right to where maybe just one of these just anywhere shift S cursor to selected uh, we'll do a little bit more text here just on this side again and this would have like numbers on it and uh, I can't really do it too well in Blender, so I'm just going to do it this way. So I'm going to say one inch space and then just do this vertical thing, which kind of doesn't fit very well. 1.5 inches, vertical thing, 2 inches, vertical thing, 2.5 inches, vertical thing, 3 inches, vertical thing, and um, did I leave this space? Three. Uh, 3.5 inches and then just scale it down and position it so sort of like something like that and we'll do the same thing we'll give it a little bit of an extrusion and a little bit of bevel and try to get this to fit uh, we'll go GZ and hold shift and just get it 
on there, in there, whatever, slash, can you bring everything else back? And uh, yeah, something like that. Okay, well, you get the idea. And barring any other little details, that is the pipe wrench right there. It's not low poly, okay? Never, I never promised you low poly on this. All right, now, final thing that I like to do is make sure it's in a collection. It already is, but I, I like to call it a wrench or something like that. And with my Shift C, 3D cursor right there, Shift A, collection instance wrench that does not increase the polys there. Let's rotate Z 180 and really look from the side and just put it down. And it's just you know a way to uh, you know have them different, you know, see the details that you didn't see otherwise. Let's uh, flip over here to matte cap. Uh, by the way, this is a good check uh, using one of these. Uh, you'll, you'll see things with a different shade and it'll tell you if your polys are flipped but that is the pipe wrench right there all right so if you want to model this uh, you grab the reference image and uh, have a go at it and uh, yeah i hope you get a nice result thanks for watching